In this video, we will be tasting and talking about batch 78 of the Eco Cha Tea Club, a traditional Dongding Oolong tea from spring 2022 harvest. Batch 78 of the Eco Cha Tea Club is a traditional Dongding Oolong tea from spring 2022 harvest uh, made by our friend from his family plot of Qingxin Oolong, which is close to 30 years old now, planted by his father, and uh, has been maintained well, uh, not overly used or abused with extensive pesticides or fertilizers, so it's still producing quite well. For traditional oolong tea, these crops make some of the best traditional Dongding oolong that we've tasted. We initially sourced our in-store stock of traditional Dongding oolong tea from the same guy uh, who has another plot of tea that is Tai Cha number 20, Yingxiang oolong or alluring fragrance. Um, he harvested that a week or two before this one and we were in the factory that night, uh, showed up late in the evening, just as the leaves were reaching their peak of their oxidation uh, phase just before they would be tumble heated to cease oxidation. And the factory was amazing. <laughs> the smell in the factory, I mean, was incredible. It was so full and so, it's, it's indescribable. Um, I'm getting goosebumps. <laughs> uh, it's, that effervescence of the leaves when they have been sufficiently oxidized they're actually emanating heat because they're piled um, significantly and um, it's a very specific thing and we actually said then before the leaves were completed when we smelled that fragrance uh, i personally have never experienced or don't recall experiencing such a heady uh, aroma in a factory like that. And I've been to dozens of factories uh, over dozens of years, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, so I said, can I have some please right then and reserved our in-store stock. The uh, next week or two later, uh, he harvested his Qingxin Oolong crop, which grows a little bit more slowly. It's also a hundred or more meters higher. Um, and we were not able to make it up to the factory that day, but he reported uh, good things about it. And even though we already had our in-store stock, decided we need to get some of this stock as well and dedicated it to the Eco Cha Tea Club. So uh, here we are, proud to present what I feel personally is really exemplary, uh, traditional Dongding Oolong tea. It's not easy to find these days at all because the standard Dongding, uh, is roasted. That's the biggest reason. This uh, traditional style is left unroasted. It's what our friend Mr. Chen remembers his father and even more so his grandfather producing when he was in high school helping out uh, in the factory. So um, he explained this to us and after hearing it a few times from him and a few other people uh, that are representatives of their local tradition, we decided we need to um, share this type of tea. Um, so the roasted version has been around for at least 30 years. It's not new. Um, it's just that that became the uh, something in demand 30, 40 years ago when merchants were starting to roast the crops that they had purchased and perhaps didn't sell within a given season. So they started having roasted tea along with the new crops of freshly made tea. And the roasted tea was welcomed. It became popular for good reason. I mean, it's our favorite all-time tea as well. This tea is much more moderate or humble, you could say, because it's not as pronounced, it's not as bold of a flavor profile, but it's definitely no less full. It's just more subtle. It's very smooth and balanced, typically. Um, it can be quite fragrant, but it's a well-oxidized tea, so the, the green freshness has been mellowed completely, basically. Uh, and reaching a well-oxidized, uh, a level of oxidation to this extent, without it becoming something close to, or beginning to go toward the black tea or hong cha side of the spectrum, 
is where the finesse and expertise is. It's about uh, significantly and extensively and uniformly, basically thoroughly oxidizing them to 30% or more without having them become overly or unevenly oxidized. A lot of what is uh, available on the market as well oxidized tea, the edges are quite red and the centers are still quite green. We'll have a look at the leaves in a minute. Without talking any further, I wanna take a sip of this. I brewed uh, just over 12 grams of tea in a 180 milliliter uh, Gaiwan teapot. I started at one minute and then I went to, oh, excuse me, I, I started at one minute, 10 seconds, went down to one minute, increased five seconds, one minute, five seconds on the third brew and one minute, 15 seconds on the fourth brew. I have the fifth brew in the pitcher that I brewed for one minute, 30 seconds. I love how this tea uh, kind of just demands my attention. It, it's, it, it's a challenge to put words of flavor notes on it. It's, it's got a lot of flavor. What flavor notes individually are in there is something that um, I continue to be challenged by. As I was brewing the tea, uh, what, one of the thoughts I had was mango scone. There's, it's a very heady aroma coming off the brewed leaves as they are brewing. Uh, it's one of my favorite aspects of this tea. There's sweetness in there. There's floral notes in there. There's warming spice in there. I thought of cinnamon oatmeal at some point throughout the brewing uh, progression. And uh, so the aroma is really interesting to say the least. It's got a bit of wide spectrum that goes from uh, pastry to savory to herbal to floral in my experience literally as I, I brewed each one I smelled the leaves and there's just it's it, it goes through a progression that's quite amazing the flavor the mouthfeel one of the things that I feel is most impressive about this particular batch is the mouthfeel it's very thick and smooth it's also quite clean there's no syrupy or um, stickiness to it at all what does it taste like it's so hard to pinpoint okay what was i thinking uh in other brews when i brewed i brewed this tea a few times now we compared it with our roasted spring dongding oolong as well as our in-store traditional dongding oolong uh made from the tai chan number 20 and uh in that three uh comparing three teas at the same time this one won out in terms of its overall balance and smoothness. Uh, I, I do feel like there's a floral aspect to it. Let's keep moving here. Okay, I'm definitely gonna say floral this time around, but some subtle fruitiness, not much vegetal really, although there's something No, it's not dark green leafy. There's something sort of a sweet vegetal flavor in there. Maybe snap peas or snow peas. Enough, uh, just a little bit of astringency to dry, the, give it a dry finish and let the aroma really be pronounced. Oh, it's that, <laughs> it's, it's very addictive. My mind's drawing a blank, I must say, like, I'm not gonna make stuff up just to say words that sound good. <sighs> Some bready pastry, uh, there is a certain mellow toasted grain base. And then there's just a lot going on in your head. <laughs> is it fruity? Yes, there's a sweet factor in there. It's very fragrant um, and just on a broad spectrum of what can be called notes. 
when I breathe out now, it's just really amazing. I think a lot of people would go with floral. And there's something so original flavor oolong about it. Uh, it's kind of a, a, uh, obtuse or a little bit uh, nebulous term, I suppose. What is original flavor oolong? I'm not sure. That's just what comes to mind for me. It's, it's the oolong. Okay, here's what the maker has said more than once to me. He said he likes to make this tea because it really shows its beauty without any makeup. That is a pretty simple and uh, conclusive way to put it. He, he's basically saying it doesn't need any touch-up work. This is the final product and it stands on its own. It's, born, it's a born natural beauty. So that's an analogy that kind of works for this tea. What am I on here? I just poured the fifth brew. I've been talking a lot, getting drunk really quickly. Um, holds, holds, totally holds out. Um, so in terms of the leaf material, when we did the three-way comparison of our three Dongding uh, spring tea batches, this was, it has the largest chunks. Let's go with the dry leaves first. The stems are, uh, substantial not oh there's not a ton of stem material but some of the stems are thick and pronounced the coloration is i would say overall uniform there are some uh yellowing nugs there that show the maturity of the leaves as well but not uh a, not a huge amount of them and for traditional oolong to process the leaves to this extent and reach that level of oxidation that you want. They need to be manipulated a, not, a lot. They need to be shuffled and tumbled and set, uh, let sit and then get to the point where they're emanating heat, a lot of chemical transformation going on within the leaves. So if it's very tender leaves, that tender leaf material won't hold up to it very well. It'll just kind of lose its fragrance and become um, something that doesn't offer the complexity that we want in a high quality oolong. So this could be considered um, ideal for the type of tea that it was made. So there we have it. Oh, I need to taste this. This is the combination of all the brews, uh, the leftover after I poured it into each cup. So we have one through five. It's cooled down, it's still warm. If nothing else, it's an intriguing flavor profile. It, I, I'm, I can't wait. I hope I get some feedback where people are just like, yeah, I get it. Like, what does it taste like? I'm not sure, but I still want to keep drinking it. Pastry, fruity, floral, not very vegetal. Batch 78 of the Eco Cha Tea Club, traditional Dongding Oolong tea made from uh, our friend's family plot of tea in Fonghuang, Phoenix Village, the heart of Dongding Oolong Tea Country. Check it out, and we'll see you next time.